Welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons with the VCR guys. I'm Joe. That's Nick in the sleeping hat. And that's George down there in front of uh, a mystical land. I can't even sleep without my sleeping hat. I don't know how you guys do it. Will, do you, actually, you don't actually sleep with that, right? Yeah, I, this don't. is the first will, time I've worn this. Will you, will you wear it tonight and then report back next week? You know what? I'll try it. Yeah, I will try it. I just don't think I'm going to like the encumbrance on my head, but I'll try it. <laughs> It's the old ti- old timey people liked it, right? Like Abraham Lincoln probably had one. Yeah, I think of Abraham Lincoln, and I think of um, uh, Scrooge. Christmas Carol. Yeah, yeah, yeah Scrooge, of course. Uh, let's talk about uh, what we're eating first of all. It's Saturday morning; you got to have a bowl of cereal. So, Joe, what do you have? I gotta have my pops. <laughs> you guys know that commercial? Yeah, I gotta yeah. have my pops. Dun-dun. I referenced it to somebody this weekend. I was with some friends and I said, I got to have my pop. I think I said, I got to have my flops, like my flip flops as a, as a, as a joke and nobody left. And um, I was like, it's the reference to the corn pops commercial and nobody knew it. Ugh. I know. They're, not, they're not my friends anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you ever do the thing with those mini boxes where you could actually eat them out of the box? That's what I got. We always got these camping. Yeah. yeah. And you can uh, slice it open in the middle of their perforated and yep. I yep. caught myself doing that. <laughs> Did you really? Once. Yeah. How, you okay? But by, by trying to get in. <laughs> Day. I I used uh, a long time ago, but I, I would I would grab a steak knife because I wasn't thinking because I was trying to get to my cartoons. You That's know, true. grab a no. box, grab whatever sharp implement, and then suddenly you're Did in you the emergency bowls? room. We did, but you want to try to use the the packaging. I mean, I don't know. That's it's part fun. of the fun of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We did that too. I found a really gross cereal at Target the other day. Um, let me uh, show you the box because, I mean, this, can you read this? Cotton Candy Crunch Yeah. from Captain Crunch. And uh, not surprisingly, it's on clearance. It was like two bucks for this thing. And it's like, it's, I mean, it's a carnival food. There's no way around it. It's a carnival food. It's like having elephant ear cereal or snow cone cereal. And it smells revolting. I haven't tried it yet, but here's what the cotton candies look like. Think about it. I want to. I want to see. Uh, okay. Ugh. There's no way. I mean, you, should, you shouldn't give a kid that, right? It's pure sugar, but it's so good. <laughs> it tastes like. Um, I mean, it tastes like an all Crunchberry cereal. I mean, they actually have Oops All Berries, right? But this is what it tastes like. It tastes like all Crunchberries. Huh. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's Well, you really were from a sugary family. You were a sugary cereal family, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. So this is yeah. always going to be a treat whenever we do these on Saturday mornings because I don't really have sugary cereal anymore. I'm more of a grape nuts man, but uh, giving myself an excuse. George, what do you have? Uh, I'm afraid it's just Special K with uh, vanilla and almonds, which is not very fun. Boom. Boring. Boom. George, you got to upgrade. I poured game. schnapps into it. So <laughs> oh, that. okay. All right. <laughs> like Travis Pickle. So. Um, well, here's what we're going to do. Each and every week, we're, we're going to pick out some cartoons, and we're going to watch them. And we're going to do this for 10 weeks, and we're going to see if it sticks. Um, this first week, we're going to watch an all-cartoon preview. Uh, we're going to have on Caitlin McGurk. She's going to be joining us pretty soon. But before we bring her on, I wanted to play. I wanted to get things fired up with a commercial. Um, in yeah. fact, I want to play that Corn Pops commercial because I, after I made the joke, I was like, am I crazy? Like, did I just imagine that? I didn't. So I'm going to play that commercial to get things started off here on Saturday Morning Cartoons. We're at Corn Pops. Sorry. She ate all my Kellogg's Corn Pops. I'll just get something else. How could you? We're supposed to share. Where's Mom? Oh, Mom, that Pops taste like sweet popcorn and she ate the last bowl. Uh, hey, guys. Oh, Corn Pops. Kellogg's Corn Pops is part of this complete breakfast. I gotta have my pops. There it is. I gotta have my pops. 
Yeah. Do you think they made the Jaws theme just different enough that they didn't have to license it, or do you think they had probably. to pay something? Yeah. No, they probably, yeah. But isn't, isn't it kind of fun? The commercial, I, I rewatched it today, I was like, oh, it's, he's kind of like a junkie. Yeah. I was just like, I got to have this thing. He's saying it in his head, and he's going crazy inside his own mind. He's like, I need this thing. I'm going to so go nuts serials here. were based on addiction, like the, uh, the Trix Bird had a problem, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the, then, uh, the Trix Rabbit. The Trix Rabbit. And then yeah. what was the bird, the Cocoa Puffs bird? It was yeah. Cuckoo for Fruit Cocoa Loops. Puffs. Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Well, oh yeah, there, there, there's yeah, yeah. So there, there was yeah. A, this right. is a DSM story serial, right? Who's obsessed? Hang on, I gotta help Marty up here. He's um, on his ramp. Um, yeah. So, uh, um, but yeah, and there's also people trying to take away uh, their addiction, and they were yeah. mad about that. But we'll see that because George, you curated some commercials for us. Yes, yes. We've. Uh, I last night I went through 106 commercials that I cataloged, and I put them into. Uh, so here are some of the categories that I divide them into. Video games, breakfast cereals, failed toy lines, inappropriate local commercials, rap appropriation, unwinnable contests, suffocating 80s style bordering on self-parody, exasperated dads, mm. ethnographically dubious, which includes rap appropriation, and my absolute favorite in one, week, one set we cannot watch, insane PSAs. Um, All and, right. And so, yes. So I really did my work last night on that. So that'll yes. be spread out throughout the series then. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, cool. And you know what else? Like the Soggies, right? The Soggies always wanted to get the, the Captain Crunch from Captain Crunch, right? Right. Yeah. It's they almost were... like it's, but it's almost like they were crack addicts, right? And they're like trying to steal because they need it. Yeah, they would they would sogify the cereal, I think. So they oh, they wanted of, to ruin it. Yeah, they would make it soggy. But Captain oh, okay. Crunch was so crunchy, it didn't. It's not much working on the uh, Carnival Crunch here, the Cotton Candy Crunch. It's pretty soggy already. Mm. Should we uh, bring on our special guest? We'll do it. You may recognize her from episode 31 of VCR Party. We watched some other cartoons with her there. Uh, it's Caitlin McGurk. She is the associate curator of the Billy Ireland Cartoon Library and Museum in Ohio State. Uh, amazing repository for comic art. Cartoons are, are a bit of a leap, but we just are friends with Caitlin and thought this would be fun. So she's joining us for this episode. Let's bring her on. Hi, Caitlin. Hey, you guys. Hey. Me. Hi, welcome to Saturday morning. It's a beautiful day to be alive. It really is. What, what, uh, what pajamas you got on there? Is that I've Ziggy? got my, my favorite Ziggy Nighty on and it's nice. very um, relevant to the time. It says all classes are canceled due to lack of interest. Oh, so funny. true, Ziggy. I know. <laughs> Topical. So true. <laughs> what do you uh, think? What do you think about Ziggy? What's your opinion on Ziggy? You like him? I'm a big Ziggy lover. In fact, I'm surrounded by some Ziggy paraphernalia for our, our morning breakfast. I've got my Ziggy mug. This is oh, uh, man. some actual uh, like uh, police commentary, police enforcement commentary from uh, Ziggy oh. here. Ahead of his time, like yet again. Yeah. And then I've also got my uh, Ziggy breakfast tray. To eat off of. Wow. Might as well face it. You're addicted to Ziggy. I truly am. <laughs> We've all got the pretty gross cereals. I've got a cotton candy flavored cereal. Uh, well, did you bring one this morning? Yeah, I've got the classic Fruity Pebbles for oh, the nice. cartoon theme. Thought I'd stick with it, you know? Yeah. Do you, actually, do you actually eat that cereal like if you weren't doing this show? Oh, hell no. And I had a, a <laughs> burger for dinner, so this is going to taste great on top of that. <laughs> Yum. When's the last time you had Fruity Pebbles? Gosh, I don't know. Middle school, probably? But I did really like them, and I was allowed to eat all that stuff when I was a kid. Me too. Uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm fine with it, you know? Heard me the first time today. Yeah, I'm curious about George, because I know you have a very particular diet. What, what was your... Um regimen growing up were you allowed everything and oh was back it? then i was it was crazy i mean i was i mean mainly i was buying it for opening the bag to put my disgusting arm down to get whatever crap was on the back of the box so but uh i, I mean i yeah it was just constant sugar i was probably eating candy while eating uh <laughs> cereal was, in the morning what was your main one what was your main uh, cereal um i think i like lucky charms okay uh, yeah and but you know just the marshmallows of course yeah we were a captain crunch family mm. just I love straight, captain crunch. straight yeah. captain crunch we didn't fuck with the peanut butter or the uh 
the Crunch berries. berries or anything. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was a bit of an omni cereal. I would like whatever was new and aver I, that I was advertised on a cartoon. I would convince my parents to buy. So, and uh, not coincidentally, I was thirty pounds overweight. So, <laughs> same here. <Yeah. laughs> uh, well, let's get started. Let's talk about uh, what we're doing today. Yeah, t today. What are we, Nick? This was your idea. You wanted to watch these cartoon previews. Now, I I wasn't aware of these at all. I didn't even know they existed. But today, I just went on a on a deep dive, and these things are fascinating. Yeah, you, said you and your sister watched them all. The we time. did. We would uh, every uh, before the fall cartoons were coming out. We, my sister and I, <laughs> Marty is is uh, going crazy behind me. Um, before uh, the new cartoons would come out in the fall, usually in September. Um, in fact, the one I'm going to show uh, debuted today, September 12th, uh, I, which was a Friday. Then it debuted at Friday prime time. My sister and I would watch TV guides in hand and uh, circle the new cartoons that we were interested in for that fall. So we'd be like, okay, it's 7.30, it's Smurfs. Eight, we turn over to Back to the Future. You know, Beetlejuice is on at nine. And we'd make a whole grid. And uh, it was all based on what was outlined by these star-studded uh, cartoon previews. Hmm. Uh, the first one I want to show, um, not surprisingly, features ALF. It aired September uh, 12, 1987. It's called Alf Loves a Mystery, and it has a ton of different uh, live action characters, but also cartoons. Did you watch this when you were a kid? Absolutely. I remember my sister and I watching this on a Friday night and then watching Alf the next, uh, the next morning. So do you remember these, Caitlin? I, I mean, I don't know the, uh, the cartoon previews, I don't think, okay. but, uh, but we'll see. Some might seem familiar when I check it out. These might uh, ring a bell. So let's start with the first one, and then everybody else ha has one to share as well. Alf Loves a Mystery, starring in alphabetical order, Alf. From our house, Shannon Doherty. From St. Elsewhere, Stephen Burt. From Alf, Benji Gregory. From 227, Jack A. From Valerie's family, Danny Ponce. From Bags to Riches, Douglas Seal. From the Golden Girls, Betty White, Mary Wicks. From Rags to Riches, Heidi Ziegler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Star studded. I'm telling you, Sid, my memoirs are going to sell a million. Well, every kid in America will want to know about my life on Melmac before it went kablooey. Yeah, yeah, my new Saturday morning series with a brilliant new chapter every week. Disengage retro plugs. The kids will love it. Alf, you're amazing. How do you do that anyways? The powers of imagination, Benji. When you've got a big talent like mine, anything is possible. Could you put me in a story? What about a mystery? I love a mystery. Sounds great. Now, we need the right mood for this thing. I don't like this. Oh, Joe, nobody's playing. Take charge, kid. Think of Bogey. What would he do? Who's Bogey? Sort of a Don Johnson in a crumpled suit. Is that drunk up? Step aside. Al, I know this one. It's something from Alvin and the Chipmunks. Did you guys watch oh, no. Alvin and the Chipmunks? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, but, but I don't think I enjoyed it. I think I watched it and I was just like, it's on and it's a, it's a cartoon. I, yeah, Caitlin, yeah. why didn't, uh, why weren't you a fan? Oh my, I just, I know it's, it sounds so typical, but the voices just drove me insane. <laughs> I get I it. I don't like it. And it creeps me out, them being like in my Christmas tree and all up in my shit. And like, yeah, like, yeah the rodents. Like you don't want them. So. I yeah, get yeah. it now. I get it now. Yeah. All right. Can you I know him from Animal House. Rats! <gasps> oh, fudge. The reception's on the blink again. All I get is a hairy guy with a big nose and an attitude problem. Hairy little guy, huh? This character just wrote herself out of this mystery. We're moving on. Okay, gummy bears, hit it. You know, in Gummy Glam, there's nothing we like better than a good night's sleep. 
here goes. Three apples tall and colored blue. Search a trunk for your next clue. Three apples tall and colored blue. Sounds like my last date. No! The... What does that joke mean? Like, what do you... <laughs> like, to deconstruct that. What? Three apples tall and colored blue. Sounds like my last date. And also, you know what? It's also weird without a studio audience there to laugh at that. Exactly. Because it just sounded like the joke really fell flatter than <laughs> it actually did. <laughs> and, like, imagine, like, in, in uh, ALF, and I guess probably because of this, too, they couldn't have a studio audience because, like, you know, there's there's puppet trenches and, you know, it would give everything away. So it, every joke falls flat without a studio audience. It just must have – I like the raw footage from that. And Nick, you've already seen this. I'm a little bit confused with this. So they're in a haunted house and they're going around to different rooms and then they're just doing different things in the different rooms. Yeah, the cartoons are giving them clues about how, how to find a treasure and who did it. And I, I cut out, I trimmed out a lot of the fat here, trust me. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was basically like different. Um, a mirror on the wall would turn into you know, the cartoon foofer, and then it would give him a, a clue about yeah, the next I place just, to go. I, I just wasn't expecting to see Betty White with a crystal ball. Yeah, and, yeah, no, yeah. she played a, a new age guru in this one. Smurfs! Oh, I love those little guys. And there's the trunk we've got to search. Can we have a look? Well, I'm not used to a nine-year-old detective going through my private things, but, oh, go for it. We've been waiting for you at Smurf Village. Don't miss one blue-blooded moment of our new adventures. We'll be looking for you. Don't disappoint us. Here comes the clue. Wait, Nick, hip hop. Yes? Everybody likes Smurfs here, right? Everybody likes Smurfs, right? I used yeah. to collect them. I was. I too. I never thought about the Smurfs having blue blood, though. I don't know why. <laughs> but but they said our I yeah, feel Papa Smurfs and our <laughs> yeah, Papa Smurfs and our blue our join us on our blue blooded adventures. Ooh, I, <laughs> I thought like that meant ar um, aristocratic. I didn't think. I'm going to pretend it means actual blue blood. <laughs> okay. That's uh, yeah. I guess there were no Smurf deaths in any episode, so we could never really confirm it, right? Or like yeah. violent Smurf deaths. They're probably. Disappointingly, there weren't any, no. Yeah. All right, so Papa Smurf's giving them their next clue. It's a wondrous treasure. Search there for laughter and for pleasure. Which go, you guys? Old Archie comics. I've loved the Archie characters ever since I was a kid. Especially Veronica. She always wears such great clothes. The new Archies? What's that? Heads up, kids! We're coming at ya! It's the new Adventures of the Archie Gang! What's the clue, Archie? In a room behind a yellow door, you'll find the clue you're looking for. Well, they don't have to animate Thanks, it. Archie. They're just we'll looking see you at Saturday. it. Uh -huh. well, uh, hold what, on, Nick. What's your history with uh, Archie's? I was going to ask the same question. Joe, I know you, you and your brothers always had double digests. We, we, we tore through Archie's. We loved Archie's. We had all of them. We had Laugh. We had the double digests. We had, yeah, yeah. Caitlin, what do you think? What, what's your take on Archie? I love Archie, and not gonna lie, I'm kind of a fan of Riverdale. A little embarrassed to admit it. The I didn't Archie, watch it. The you liked it? Off, I, I weirdly love it, but that's aside from the fact. <laughs> Here's a little plug for the Billy Ireland, where I'm from. Uh, we have the Dan DiCarlo collection, which contains uh, thousands of pieces of original art from Archie. He's kind of the artist who created the quintessential Archie look. Oh. And uh, was he the one who invented like cross hatching in the hair? I always remember that have. i'm actually not sure you may have yeah uh what's your history with archie george um i i think i was more into richie rich comics mm -hmm. just because that's what my older brother had and you know when you when you're a younger sibling whatever your older sibling is interested in is what you're interested in you don't have a choice in the matter right Right. Yeah, you you go on your blue-blooded adventures with your yes. richie rich <laughs> i sure comic. do you had aspirations of being rich i did <laughs> i did oh well <laughs> Um, and now, now you're on this show with us. <laughs> have you seen lately with uh, Archie comics? I think maybe about a year ago they killed Archie off. Did you see that? Yeah. 
Yeah, I picked that up because I thought back. it might be worth something. There's been like Archie, Archie versus zombies. There's a lot of queer characters in Archie. Archie is like all over the place and amazingly uh, more relevant than ever right now. Like kids are into Archie again. It's great. I was just going to say, somebody must have came in and said, let's stay relevant. And yeah. then they, yeah, so <laughs> good for them. And they, they decided to reinvent themselves in 1987, too, uh, with a really crappily animated cartoon. All in a day's work. Way to go, kid. I hope this covers your expenses, kid. Somehow it doesn't seem like enough. Thank you. She was going to kiss that little boy. Yeah, that was Shannon. very sexual. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shannon Doherty was going to kiss that little boy. <laughs> It's always shit like that back then. Yeah. <laughs> weird Jessica Rabbit sexy music. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it's kind of weirder here. Uh oh. What's the big idea? You're not old enough for some stories, Benji. Maybe we'll finish this one in a few years. When you've At got least I two. still have the money. Elf! Well, big bucks, who'd you expect? George Washington? Ah, ah, I kill me. They had their B writer. Elf loves a mystery. We'll return after these messages. I'm Jack A. This week, Smokey Robinson, Big C's, and I will host all your Saturday morning favorites right here on NBC. You can say that again. I'm Jack A. This week, Smokey. Uh. Can I keep the coat and hat to remember my adventure? Sure. Better yet, tune into NBC Saturday morning. And you'll see all the friends who helped you out in the shows of their own. Alf, you're the greatest. Now I can't wait till Saturday. You ready for a date at the beach, Alf? Is that who I think it is? Some things, kid, are just too good for words alone. She's attracted to little boys and uh, aliens. I'll see you every morning. I'll see you in the morning. Saturday mornings are made just for kids and having fun. So don't miss all your old friends and some new ones tomorrow morning here on NBC. And on Sunday, don't miss the season premiere of Our House, when a big bad oh, earthquake be threatens the very existence of the Witherspoon family. From comedy to drama, we've got it all here on NBC. Elf loves a mystery. Did you guys watch any, did you watch the Elf cartoon? Never did. Didn't know it existed. There was two. There was Elf, and then there's Elf Tales after that. But yeah, they so just franchised were, everything. What were your uh, cartoons growing up, or when you when, like in your prime of Saturday morning cartoons? What were your main go-to? I mean, I you know I'm a millennial. I watched a lot of Nickelodeon, and I watched a lot of Ducktales and the Darwin Cook Batman cartoon. Those kind of things. Yeah, okay. you had it better than we did. You, I think so. Like, you know, our cartoons were just barely animated. I just kind of phoned in. I feel like the the Batman was good. It was actually good, you know. It was and really good. DuckTales yeah. was not bad, you know. Well, one thing with that I'm noticing with all these early commercials that are uh, cartoons that I'm going to be playing too, is that they all had the moral of the story at the end. And I think maybe they gave that up uh, when you were coming of age, or when you were watching cartoons. You know what That's I mean? Funny. Like, everything was just like, it's important to be honest. You know, like at the end, it always had, it was morality stories every what single time. What do you time. think the, the moral was at the end of that episode we just saw? Uh, what, of what, well, of the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, be true to yourself. <laughs> don't be conceited. I don't know. <laughs> I know where the fire exits are. And that's why Shannon Doherty ended up with Elf. So <laughs> like, yeah. Wait till you're a little older, and then you can be sexually attracted to an older uh, woman. Uh, George, what do you have for us? So that was the 1987 NBC lineup. In 1983, they had a similar show that tried to incorporate live action representations of the cartoons. Um, I'd shown a few clips of this on VCR Party. Uh, I watched the whole thing finally, and it is unwatchable. But I managed to cobble five minutes together of <laughs> uh, of what is called the Yummy Awards. Um, and I'm sorry in advance. Tonight, from Hollywood, it's the first annual NBC Yummy Awards. 
as we honor the most exciting stars and nominated shows of Saturday morning television with your host, Ricky Schroeder. Thank you, Chris, and welcome to the first annual NBC Yummy Award Show. You've heard of the Oscars, the Emmys, the Tonys, and the Grammys. Well, tonight, we're handing out Yummies, the only award you can eat. This is it. It's a golden ice cream cone filled with a specially chosen flavor that honors the brand new hits and returning favorite shows on NBC Saturday morning television. The the yummies are delicious, nutritious, yeah. and loaded with calories. This is really television to grow on. <laughs> the next hour, you'll see some of the all-time great names of the history of television. They'll be joining today's favorites to present awards to the Saturday morning stars. And those stars are here in person to accept their yummies. One of the great stars of the A-Team, Howling Mad Murdoch himself, Mr. Dwight Schultz. Further background on the yummy concept. <laughs> this thing was that he was insane, Hi right? And, yes. Uh, I don't know what to say here. I, uh, oh, yo, yo, it's, uh, it's Dwight Schultz here, or is it Howling Mad Murdoch? I'm confused about that. But there's one thing I'm not confused about. I'm no dummy about these yummies. They are delicious. I mean, open my mouth and gag me with the yummy. And they keep everything on the up and up and up. We have two honorable gentlemen who will guard the yummies until they are awarded tonight. Thanks, Dwight. And now I get to introduce a brand new TV star and a famous veteran personality to you and to each other. From the cast of Family Ties, yeah, Tina TV. Yoder. And a super clown has been keeping two generations of TV watchers happy for over 30 years. Bozo, the world's most famous clown. Get to the cartoons. What my sister and I are saying right now. And the Yummy Award for the show with the star whose name is easiest to spell goes to the star of his own cartoon series premiering tomorrow morning, Mr. T. And here's the yummy, a fantastical larger-than-life scoop of tough nut crunch. Perfect. And let's join with him now from out in the location on the set where he's been doing his thing for the A-Team. <laughs> You're giving me a yummy? All right. Okay. I pity the fool who didn't vote for me. Also pity everybody who didn't get a yummy award like I did. I pity those who don't watch my new show that premieres tomorrow morning on NBC. I pity myself for being here and not being there to accept my award. Thank you for this great and tremendous honor. Where's my yummy? I pity the fool who doesn't give it to me. I want it. Nah. Hey, Jack, do you take my yummy? Let's about all the yummies, man. Now to end the suspense about you know our next was written award, or do you think you improvised? I'd like to introduce my new Stop friend from Silver Spoons. The magnetic electric... Fooby the robot! I haven't seen one cartoon yet. I'm sorry. You're unlikely to. <laughs> oh man. Oh that AI. So it's great to see you again, buddy. Ricker, you look like a million bucks. Give me three. Take it back, Jack. Do it high in the sky. Do it low. Too slow. Now someday, Fu, I wanna pull that plug on you. Smart kid. For a human. To present the next yummy with me, I'd like you all to meet a young guy who left the cast of One Day at a Time to join the beautiful Ann Jillian in the brand new NBC comedy, Jennifer Slept Here. Mr. Glenn Scarpelli! What did this mean to a nine-year-old? <laughs> yeah. No. What did any of this mean? Uh, or a little person inside that robot. Oh, Booby, how you doing? <laughs> Yeah, good, huh? We can okay. with sure, go ahead. I, I'm ready. For outstanding achievement in the category of best series about a barbarian and an evil wizard, our nominee is a brave hero in a futuristic world. And as we see him now, he's assisted by some equally brave allies. <laughs> okay, the Yummy Award goes to... Thundar the Barbarian! Celebrating his fourth year of evil avenging and receiving a barbarian cream yummy. Yeah, and to accept the awards are its stars, Thundar, Ariel, and Ookla. Oh, I thought they were going to be animated. Sorry. <laughs> Thundar the Barbarian. Thundar the Barbarian. Oh, wait, this is a cartoon show? This is the worst cartoon. Yeah. 
Lords of Light. This is a proud moment for us. Sundar, Ukla and myself are honored to accept this award in the name of Truth and Justice. We're honored to accept And that was, that was, uh, that was, that was the uh, palatable five minutes of that. And I think it could be cut down to about two. But... I know you apologized before that started, but I'm sorry, I can't accept that apology. <laughs> uh, Would so it yummy wait, change your mind if you I... You might have already said this. I might have been off in the Bahamas when you said this, but if that played once a year... It was an annual thing, or it was just a one-time thing. I think it was every fall, uh, every the the night before each fall broadcast. That was right part now. of the whole thing, then, right? Okay. Well, right, I don't think the Yummy Awards were annual. I think that was just what they did that year. Right, right, right. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Okay, so the Yummy Awards was just for that year. That was the concept. Yeah. It wasn't a, a mystery with you starring NBC stars. It was this time we'll do an awards show. And as I previously pointed out, the guy who directed that went on to direct like ten. Um, well, well, like at least five of the Academy Awards broadcasts. So oh, he really you, failed you upwards. Him down too, didn't you? Yes, I did. You've been in contact with him. Yeah. We should. Have and him uh, hopefully, we're we going to be. Well, hopefully, you're going to talk to him. Yes, we should definitely get him on the show. Yeah. yeah. Caitlin, is there one commercial that you remember being on all the time during cartoons, or any any uh, genres of commercials that you remember? You know. There's this toy commercial and the, the song from it gets stuck in my head all the time. And it, it must've been on during Saturday morning cartoons. The toy is called Mr. Bucket. Does this sound familiar to anyone? No, but I'm gonna write it down. Mr. So, Bucket. If you, look up, if you look up the video at some point, like the jingles, like Mr. Bucket, put your balls in my mouth, Mr. Bucket. <laughs> no. And it's like this bucket that in the game is to put the balls no, no, Mr. Bucket, balls pop out of my mouth. Sorry. Oh. Not, you, put the, you put the balls in its head and it spits them out of its mouth. But the song is incredibly catchy. And it was, uh, and it was a cartoon commercial, you know, spliced with kids playing with the real toy. And, um, you know, I just, just sing it sometimes. Around. Yeah. Well, let's try to find it. Maybe we can end this I'm, episode I'm looking with for it. some yeah. Mr. Bucket, put your balls in my mouth. Well, let's have a commercial break. What do you say? <laughs> George, what do you curated some commercials for us? Yes, today's uh, today's uh, concept for the commercials are um, defunct breakfast cereal brands. Love it. Saturday morning cartoons. We'll be right back. Bet there's O.J. Joe rounding up oranges yeah. for Kellogg's, where they'll take the sweet juice and put it into new O.J.'s, a crunchy, delicious, orange-tasting cereal. Let's cool. eat them up. That's one delicious orange taste, O.J. That's my brand. <laughs> O.J.'s are packed with vitamin C, part of this complete breakfast. New O.J., a oh. delicious orange-tasting cereal. Oh. It's not packed with vitamin C. It's flat. <laughs> <laughs> get along, little blueberry critters, get along. Aren't they supposed to be doggies, Bill? Not anymore. I gotta round up all these blueberry flavored critters to make my blueberry flavored waffle oats. Since folks tasted them, I did all the blueberry we flavored them critters. We butcher them and put them in the waffles. They sure taste good. Yep, they're like crunchy little blueberry flavored waffles. And a good part of this oh, we had waffles. breakfast. Waffle O's cereal, maple flavor and blueberry flavor. Gotcha. I can't wait waffles. to get to the s'mores party. Absolutely did. I think we're being you had this too, didn't you? Oh, no. I have it right now. There's the s'mores, sir. It's like a we magic trick. Wait for s'mores crunch, but so is he. Then it's a perfect time to wave my wand for swirls of chocolatey grains and marshmallows galore. It's s'mores crunch. An enchanted part of this nutritious breakfast. Can I have s'mores? Sure, s'mores crunch cereal. It's s'mores fun for breakfast. <laughs> I find this one really mm, weird. Super golden crisp. Rocks in the box. Get from rolls Bill's in the bowl. And the taste is solid gold. Not Alex Winter. Looks like it. Golden pots of wheat. Got a crunch to crisp and bold. I can't believe they got Bruce Springsteen for this. It's been moving and it's grooving it. With a taste of solid gold. Post Super Golden Crisp cereal. Part of this nutritious breakfast with a taste of that solid a gold. Why did they make a West really Point Cadets? It's a Pac-Man day. There's a lot wrong with that. What did you say, Joe? Why did they make them West Point cadets? Yeah. Isn't they be more relatable? Like, oh, I'm a kid about to go to school or something. It was the Reagan years. It was very yeah, uh, that's it. tense and, you know. 
We also had this cereal, by the way. Real coming your Batman. way. <laughs> With marshmallows. Delicious. I'm Inky. I'm Blinky. I'm Pinky. I'm Clyde. With the marshmallows you'll find inside of Batman. There goes a pack pop oh. and Inky, too. Mm -hmm. He's marshmallow. You can chop him, too. In Batman. Part of this nutritious breakfast. It's Batman. With marshmallows. Delicious. Now back to Saturday morning cartoons. All right, Joe, what do you have? All right, so I watched two of those things. I watched the nineteen, uh, the nineteen eighty nine NBC preview and the nineteen ninety ABC preview, and I'm going to show you all cartoons that I didn't even know existed. Um, you're going to see four of these. They're all the least popular ones from there. They had gummy bears in there and they had other stuff, but these are the ones that I didn't even know existed. Um, but I'm going to say, okay, of these four, three of these lasted one season mm -hmm. and one of these lasted three seasons, which is, which is pretty good for cartoons. I feel like the failure rate is pretty high on these Saturday yeah. morning oh, yeah. cartoons. Um, so we'll, we'll guess afterwards. We'll watch it and you got to guess, is this a one season or a three season? Okay. So, um, first up is the 1990 ABC Saturday morning preview. We now continue with the ABC Saturday Morning Preview. I hope they find the wizard. Yeah, I hope they find I the wizard. I ran all the way home. I couldn't wait to get here. Well, that's very flattering, my pet. Not to see you, Steve. We'll continue after these. There's, there's more banter. I edited the rest out because <laughs> then they you. got into the next next one, which they they teed up um, uh, new kids on the block. Uh, and I wanted to play that one, but it, there's just so much new kids on the block music that I knew that this episode would get shut down by YouTube <laughs> if if we would have played it. So, yeah. um, how how many how many seasons did uh, Wizard of Oz get? This is nineteen. I'm gonna say one. I'm gonna go with one. I'm gonna go with three because why not? Why not? No, it's just one. Yeah. It turns out kids from 1990 didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think the people who were writing it cared about it, but the people who <laughs> were watching it didn't. Uh, all right, here's the next one. Hi, this is Big Rosie, and I'm here to talk to you about Little Rosie, the cartoon show that's going to be on Saturdays on ABC. Well, Little Rosie is really cool, and she's a lot of fun. She has a great imagination. She doesn't need toys with 50 or 60 parts to them because it's all in her head. Because whatever she wants to do, she can do. Whatever she wants to be, she can be. Like, for instance, if she wants to fly and she thinks about it, all of a sudden she can go flying. If she wants to turn into a fish, she can turn into a fish. She can do whatever. That's what's really the cool part about being a kid, I think, and the cool part about Little Rosie. So I hope you watch it. I hope you like it. The world is full of... Seems like they could have done another take. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Rosetta was like, you get one. Because <laughs> it's not her voice in Little Rosie either. No, it's not. It's not. But yeah, it did. Her heart wasn't in that. At no. All. Watch out for. She wants to build an airplane, she does it. And come. There are. Once we tell a fish, more. becomes a fish. Alright? She's a clown, but she's no fool. She breaks up in the most angry room. Little Rosie. Back to the world. I hate the art. They always have the longest intros too because then it was less to animate each week. <laughs> That's a lot of 
<laughs> but also, like, what a lazy concept, too. It's like, oh, oh, here's this hit show that we already have. Let's make the little girl cartoon. So many of, of those, yeah. Yeah, there's so many of those. Laverne and Shirley uh, had one. Uh, the Fonz had one. Wow, I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, yeah. And also, this this one's different than the ones that you showed that you guys showed. That those at least had concepts. Like yeah. we're walking through a haunted house, or we're you know it's an awards show. This is just like, hi, I'm Roseanne. Here's what you need to see. <laughs> I'm rambling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm Posse. What's gonna be? Saturday mornings on ABC. Winnie the Pooh, the first attraction. The Wizard of Oz has lots of action. Slimer and the buses are the next in line with Beetlejuice. It's showtime. New kids on the block are hanging tough. Bugs and Tweety have a funny stuff. Now let's get cozy with Little Rosie. And just for you, it's Scooby Doo. On ABC, you know the rest. You gotta watch it, kids, because it's the best. Um, I forgot to ask you, Rosie, uh, how many seasons? One. One. Three. Three. One. Oh. Yeah, didn't stand a chance. <laughs> uh, two years later, though, I read this. Two years later, an animated special called The Rosie and Buddy Show was produced as a primetime special in which Rosie and Buddy invade a cartoon land to take on the meddling executives who wanted to change their show. <laughs> That's like technically they, they, three seasons, so I was right. Here. Right, oh, okay, yeah. yeah, maybe you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. We'll be right back. Remember that one? Absolutely. Okay, so this is the NBC one, and uh, they, they got the uh, Saved by the Bell cast to come in for this one. And nice. they So the concept for this one is they got, uh, it was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. They, I think they called it something like, Honey, I Shrunk the Cartoon Previews. And they all get <laughs> shrunk up and put into a TV. And now they're exploring the worlds inside the TV as Got they're it. shrunk down. All right. Wow. Oh, and by the way, you can see the boom mic right there. See the boom mic, <laughs> the boom mic oh, up yeah, there, there, top right. Yep. Yep. There it is. But as in Little Rosie, they wow, get a Yep. Damn <laughs> candy. Hey. <laughs> Wait up, guys. I don't want to miss anything. Cool. Hey, I've heard about this. Huh? This is one of those new shows on NBC Saturday morning. That's right. right. And we're still on the right track. Oh, oh hi, hey. campers. <laughs> How you doing? Hey, it's John Candy. How you doing? <laughs> Very good. I just got here myself. You're just in time. We're going to go on a water skiing trip. And then we're going to play a little volleyball and uh, get a corn roast happening, tell some ghost all stories. Right. You know, John, I'm sure we'd all love to stay, but see, the problem is we're due back in school at any minute. Oh, that's right. Oh, I catch your drift. Sure, work before pleasure. Yeah, but before you go, though, I'd love to show you the fun we're going to have at Camp Candy. It'll just take a minute. Here, would you... Yeah. No, don't. No, that's okay. Don't worry. That's all right. I got it. 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 It's right here. Here, I want you to check this out. Look at this map. They always do that. Camp Candy is full of surprises. something up that becomes the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> the trope. I like this. I like this freeze right here. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Full of surprises. You never know what's going to happen next. Not my voice. It is actually his voice. That's the fun of it. I don't think it is in the cartoon. Is it, it is. I like it. It is? Yeah. Really? It was, wow. One of the few that actually did it. Yeah. Huh. Do yourself a favor. Don't miss the fun with me and the rest of the gang this Saturday. Yep. There it is. <laughs> Who shrunk Saturday morning? Oh, oh yeah. I'm gonna say that it only lasted one as well. Okay. Yeah, I'm going with one. Yeah. I guess Short. one. Mm -hmm. Three. Three Camp seasons. Candy for three Candy. seasons. Really? Three wow. seasons. I was just as shocked as you were. I'd never wow. heard of that. No, me neither. My theory is is that he actually did the voice, so maybe it was actually yes. funny. Yeah. Right. And they got to keep their star happy, and yeah. And I think this is 1990, so I, I think that maybe I had stopped watching Saturday morning cartoons at that point. I don't know. How old was I? 14? I don't know. Uh, ninth grade? Yeah, freshman yeah. high school, maybe. Yeah, yeah. it's probably too cool for it at that point. So, mm -hmm. um, All right, here's the last one. Uh, we'll both be back after um, these messages, I think. Can you feel that? Yeah. It tangles like electricity. Hey, it's coming from this shrine. You are right, Screech Son. It is the most powerful energy field. You are right, Screech Son. <laughs> what I just said. 
<laughs> you are right, Screech Sound. It is the most powerful energy field. The missing shrine from my home run. Hey, that's the Mr. Miyagi from the Karate Kid. <laughs> right again. Is it really Pat And in our new adventure no, on Saturday morning, say. young Daniel, our new friend Taki, right. and I search the world over for the missing shrine. The shrine holds great power, and in evil hands, it can be most dangerous. Thrills await you. Join Daniel, Taki, and me when our new Karate Kid adventures begin this Saturday. Boy, that looks fantastic. <laughs> this is how they end the whole son. thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is how they end the whole thing. Because the whole thing was, oh, this is the ABC one. This is how they end the yeah. ABC one. But listen closely to what's okay. coming up next. Because this is also Friday night. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sunday, Corky makes friends with a lost pig on Life Goes On. And Wednesday, Kevin's older brother Wayne is not thrilled with the job his dad found for him on The Wonder Years. Then Jason and Mike have a date with Mother Nature on Growing Pain. Now stay tuned for Perfect Strangers. Next. Oh, yeah. wow. There. Yeah, that, that was actually really fun to watch. Like, I was kind of dreading it. I thought it was going to be, but I, I actually uh, had a good time. Because you only have to see bite-sized nuggets of everything. And uh, except the Rosie O'Donnell show, they showed a big chunk of it, actually. They showed, like, like seven minutes from it. Which, of all the uh, cartoons we watched, what do you think you'd be the most likely to watch, Caitlin, from uh, anything, if it were on? Um... You know, it's, it's, I'm shocked that I've never heard of any of those because I would have been watching at that time. But I yeah. really am extremely intrigued about the John Candy summer camp. I know. I mean, like, I would love to go to that summer camp. Like, what an <laughs> awesome concept. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I totally. About this. <laughs> I just read that uh, there's a Halloween episode. So maybe for our Halloween show, we could watch the Halloween Camp Candy. Ooh. And John Candy's oh. birthday is on Halloween, so it must have been an extra special episode. And also, when he, he always just felt older to me. When he made that cartoon, he was like, I don't know if he made it. He did the voice for it and slapped his name on it. But uh, 37 years old when he made that. Oh, my God. Yes. That's yeah. it? <laughs> I, think it's like, I think it's like 1980s aging, you know? Yeah. Like, and everybody just looked aging. older. No, yeah. I don't see this guy. Yeah. Shall but. we uh, close out with the... Uh, Buckets popping balls out of their mouth? Yeah. Oh. Is it in or out? It should be. It, it, it's out. Okay. It is out, I okay. think. <laughs> All right, here we go. I think it's a fitting end to the first episode of Saturday Morning Cartoons. <laughs> Bucket. That's right, I'm Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket, put your balls in my mouth. Mr. Bucket, <laughs> put your balls in my head. Mr. Bucket, I'm gonna spit them on out. Mr. Bucket, tons of fun. Mr. Bucket. Put your balls in my mouth, Mr. Bucket. No way. Let me suck on them balls, Mr. No, so this is not real. Man, this, is, this is not real. Buckets of fun. <laughs> this is not real. So they used, no. they used the real Hold commercial. On. I, then... download, I downloaded one, too. Let's see if, if okay, it's Okay, we'll just like pretend it. like we're watching this. I hadn't watched Someone it. Someone else had the same, like, memory of yes, this. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, here, let's see if this one is... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I'm Mr. Bucket. I'm Mr. Bucket. Toss your balls in my top, I'm Mr. Bucket. Out of my mouth, I will pop, I'm Mr. Bucket. We're all gonna run, I'm Mr. Bucket. The game's Mr. Bucket. The first to get their balls in, and Mr. Bucket wins, but look out, because the balls will pop out of his mouth. I'm Mr. Bucket. The balls pop out of my mouth, I'm Mr. Bucket. A ball is what I'm about, I'm Mr. Bucket. We're all gonna run, I'm Mr. Bucket. Mr. Bucket from Milton Bradley. <laughs> Uh, I'm so glad you pointed that one out. The balls pop out of my mouth, Mr. Buckets. Right? I mean, it's a real earworm. Oh, it totally is. What a great concept for a game, just putting balls in a bucket. I kind of want to play it. I think it's kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, we should get one for a, a future episode to play around with it. Uh, thanks for joining us on our, our inaugural episode, Caitlin. Hey, it was my pleasure. This was a lot of fun. Yes, and, thank uh, you. Yeah, and uh, we're going to have you back next week as well to watch a Super Mario Brothers rap episode, which I'm very excited about. Sounds great. Thanks for watching, everybody. That's all. That's it. <laughs>